So, if you guessed that in 1984 this commercial was from the Macintosh being introduced, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what it was. In 1984, the Macintosh was released with the first brand new user interface GUI, graphics user interface. And that really changed the way that we interacted with our computers. And uh, the Macintosh, of course, kind of led that change. And then Microsoft came out and said, hey, that's pretty cool. We should do that too. And so 1990 through 92, they came up with some user interfaces. And then 1995, they finally came up with a user interface that was decent, Windows 95. And um, of course, we now have Vista and Windows 7 that's coming out. So all of these user interfaces have changed. But that's really um, important that you realize that the graphic user interface really changed the way that we interact with um, these software applications and computers in general. Now we also had this other technology that was coming out called um, the Internet and it started in 1971 with ARPANET and ARPANET was um, a series of com computers that were linked together at different um, universities and research centers. In 1971, it was pretty small. By 1980, it had gotten a little bit larger. And then everybody saw the potential of this and said, hey, why don't we open this up to the general public? Well, in 1990 through 93 or so, they, gen they made that open to the general public. But it wasn't very accessible at first because it used to be all text-based. And finally, in 1993, we really had the first visual browser come out and that was the NCSA Mosaic browser which allowed us to look at the World Wide Web um, or the Internet through an interface called the World Wide Web which is the interconnected documents that we see. And so it's really important that you understand the difference between the Internet which is the physical series um, uh, network of computers and the World Wide Web which is the graphical user interface of connected documents, HTML pages, that we know. Now there were other browsers that came out too, like Netscape Navigator and, and Internet Explorer back in 1995, and we also had Flash and stuff as well. And of course, there are other technologies that have influenced digital media as well. The most important technology to change digital media has probably been games. Back in 1972, we had Pong. Not the most exciting game, but it was pretty cool. And you're actually going to create a version of Pong in the digital media program in your Flash animation class. In 1995, we had the first real commercial hit with gaming, and that was the Nintendo. And uh, this was popular because it was easy to make games, easy to get the games out to people, and millions and millions of people started buying games. And it really pushed the industry to say, we want more and more and more, and we want them to be faster and cooler. So in 1985, you know, we had Super Mario Brothers, which was pretty cool. But in 1993, these games started even going to the desktop with full 3D interactive games. Now we've got games that are pretty advanced and uh, take really high-end computers, but they are still pushing what the limits of what computers can do. And I know this is kind of a graphic picture here, but the games have gotten a little intense, for sure. Um, you can take a look at this game online called Crisis, and I hear it's just one of the most technically advanced games ever, and it really needs a fast computer. Well, with games being super cool, there are also super amounts of problems with games, such as game addiction. This documentary, um, which just came out this year, talks about how games have addicted people so much that they're spending their entire lives, basically, on these games. And uh, they're losing their jobs, they're losing their relationships, sometimes they're finding relationships in the games, but it actually has become an addiction, and there's even halfway houses for people to go live in um, so that they can get over their game addictions and go on with a normal life. So it's cool, but there are also some problems with it. And there's also TV technology, which of course has changed from um, pretty archaic equipment to now being able to do all of this type of high-def video editing right in software. It's pretty amazing with Son uh, this is the Sony Vegas video. So um, we're going to go on and look at how things have changed as well when it comes to quality and um, capabilities in the next video.